Alright guys, it's another speed painting episode. It's been a while since I've done one, but I've had quite a few requests over the years on how I paint up my wizards. Zip, zap, zooey! And I've also been watching a lot of the kind of bigger YouTube channels and how they speed paint things, and I always think they include far too many steps. And I don't know about you, but when I'm down my local gaming store and there's grey plastic everywhere, I think the majority of people want to just paint to a decent standard as fast as they can. And I've got a couple of rules that I always stick to in order to paint things as fast as I can. Of course, there's always going to be some exceptions, but for the majority of minis, they're always speed paintable with my steps. Unfortunately, you are just stuck with me today. The speed painting wizard has gone absolutely AWOL. I've got no idea where he's gone. I don't think we've seen him since I shot him in the can video, so let's hope he's doing well. So I've got a gand off the grey and I've got a gand off the white and I'm going to show you exactly how I paint these up super fast to a decent tabletop standard. Tabletop standard. So without further ado, let's start with Gandalf the White. So immediately we're going into my first tip. Always try to make your base coat the same colour as what the majority of the miniature is going to end up. Or one that can easily be manipulated into that colour. So for Gandalf the White, as you can see here, we're going with a white base coat. This is hopefully going to make much less work for us in the future. I've just quickly given the base a coating of Rhinox Hide. This is so when we put the base ready range down later, it covers a lot better. You can try it yourself, put the base ready down over a white base and then try it again over a brown base and you'll see a brown base makes all the difference. So the first thing we're going to touch up is the skin. I'm going to go with Cadian Flesh Tone. You could go with a contrast paint here, however I like to paint skin on because the face is one of the most important parts of the miniature and I never get as good results when I use contrast paint. So the face is one of the few steps where I'm actually going to take a lot more time than I normally would. Once the Cadian Flesh Tone is dry, we're going to give it a coating of Reichland Flesh Tone. Now, Gandalf has two different colours of white on him. He has a creamier white and a normal classic white colour. For the classic white on his staff and his undercoat, I'm just copying the Games Workshop one here. However, you can see here that for some reason Games Workshop has painted the one on horse differently to the one on foot. As you can see, his beard is a silvery grey on horse and a blondy grey on foot. Also, his undershirt is the wrong colour as well. Talk about making it easier for new people to get into the hobby, eh? I'm going to be copying the foot one today because that's the one I have. I mix up some apothecary white with some contrast medium and this is going to do all the work for us. Just coat the undercloth and the staff in this and let it dry. Oh, and his shoes. Now, next up, my second tip. Use washes to do as much of the work as you can. Washing a miniature is so much easier than using a wet blend to slowly highlight up to a much lighter colour. So I've got some Lamium Medium here and some Seraphim Sepia wash. You could use Skeleton Horde Contrast paint here but I've got this Sepia handy. If you are using the Contrast paint make sure to use the Contrast Medium not the Lamium Medium as the products work differently together. So I want this just to tint the model to a nice creamy colour maybe a bit deeper in the recesses to get some nice shading. We just cover all the parts that are supposed to be bowing with this and let it dry. Then this lovely and out of focus shot, I use some black Templar on everything that's going to be silver and a basilicum grey on his belt. Touch of lead belcher on the sword. Now as you can see the miniature's dry and I think we do need a little bit more shading in some of the deeper recesses. So I just go back with the sepia and Lamium medium wash again, go into these recesses to give it a bit more shading and contrast. Just put them into any area you feel like is missing a bit of depth. I'm then just putting some white on a really dry brush and giving it an extremely light dry brush of this white colour. I am using matte white from the Army Painter but any white will do. This is just to give the most raised areas a little bit of extra highlight. Nothing major. All I've done then is put the base on it and as you can see for the small amount of time this is taking it looks pretty good. I am not fussed with this at all. But I've just gone back and had a look at all the video files and it comes to about 
10 minutes. So this result for that time, I am not fussed at all. I'm pretty chuffed for that. However, as you can see, I did get a little bit of white on his nose when I was dry rushing. It doesn't look too bad, so you could leave it here, but I am going to go back and fix his face up. First going in with Kislev Flesh is the first highlight. And as his face is very important, I'm going to go back with a flayed one flesh, just for the most highest tones on the face. And this should hopefully bring out the detail and make him look a lot better. And here is the finished product. I'm thinking it's looking pretty good. I've done hardly any work on this, let's be honest. I let the base coat and the wash do the majority of the work for me. The only work I really did was a little bit of edge highlighting for the skin and the face. So let's just have a quick recap. JMAX 5 rules of speed painting wizardry are the following. Use base coats effectively. Let washes do the majority of the work. Dry brushes are your friend. A sexy face and a lovely base. And you're on your way to greatness. Unlike, unlike him. What a twat. But anyway, on to Gandalf the Grey. So I dug this old plastic Gandalf the Grey out of the attic and I've given it a Mechanicus standard grey base coat. So that's tip one, use the base coat as the majority of the miniature. We are then going to give the entire mini a wash with null oil and lamium medium in a 50-50 basis. You can see I painted the sword with lead belcher but that was a mistake, please ignore that. Once that's dry, I give it a dry brush of Mechanicus Standard Grey. I highly recommend picking up some makeup brushes, they are working wonders for me. I then add in a little bit of white into the mix and dry brush them again. And then I want his beard to stand out even more than the rest of them. So I go back and dry brush that just with the titanium white and a little bit of Mechanicus Grey. This will make his beard stand out from the rest of the miniature. Otherwise, it's a whole lot of grey. We then do the skin with Cadian Flesh Tone, exactly the same as Gandalf the White. Do Rhinox Hide for all the brown leather and his staff. And then give his staff a really big overbrush of Steel Legion. This will give a kind of woody grain to the texture of the staff. And then wash all the wood with Agrax and the skin with Rykland Flesh Shade and the sword with Null Oil. Then I decide to try and smash out the miniature as fast as I can. Once the inks have dried, I give the skin the exact same treatment as I did Gandalf the White, Kislev Flesh, then what's it fucking called? Flayed One Flesh as a final highlight. I give the belt a bit of a highlight of Doom Bull Brown. Storm Host Silver to highlight the sword and another Steel Legion dry brush on the staff. And that is the miniature done. However, the Gandalfs, I want to give them a little bit more extra, so I'm going to take some weathering powder and weather the bottom of both of their cloaks. This is super easy to do and adds a whole lot of extra to the miniature. Again, we're trying to do the easiest things possible. I don't want to be doing hard, complex techniques when I'm painting massive armies. I do believe that the majority of us just want our armies on the table to a decent standard. So the easiest steps possible are always going to win out for me. And just before I show you the final results, I want to show you a third technique that I like to do. I've got an army that can't really fit to one base coat. Basically what I do is I just block in all the colours for the miniature. As you can see here with Balan and this is Sildor. Blocking in the colours doesn't really take that long. But then all I do to bring it up to the next level is give it an all over oil wash. Oil washes aren't exactly friendly for everyone, so if you don't want to do that, just give it a full coating of Agrax Earthshade mixed with null oil. I do think that oil wash does give a better, more mattier look, so that's what I've gone with for these two miniatures. And here we go, here's the results. I think these have turned out really well for the little amount of time that I've invested in them. So, when you're next planning your next big project, have a think. What colour do I want my army to be and is there a base coat that I can use? Colour Forge has almost every colour under the sun and I absolutely swear by it. Then, can a simple wash do the majority of the work for me? If so, Bob's your uncle. Your next project will hopefully take absolutely no time at all.
and add up all the video files for how long it took me to actually paint these. It's less than 10 minutes a piece, so I am quite chuffed with my one method. You know, I've even won painting competitions using these techniques. Here is a white scar I painted for a local painting competition that I won. As you can see, I used a white base coat. I definitely did not paint this white on. That would be absolutely mental to me. It is literally white spray, you can see there. The only painting I had to do was adding some black contrast paint, some silver to the weapons, and a contrast red to the shoulder pads. Before my second technique comes into play, making the wash do the majority of the work, I just use streaking grime all over this miniature and some dirty down rust. And then finally some weathering powder. And as you can see the results are pretty good for almost no work at all. And here's the proof. Here's the white base coat on the majority of the miniatures before I get around to washing it. I am a lazy bastard and I am going to do as little work as I can and try and get the best results as possible. I do have another video, I'll link at the end of this one, about batch painting armies, which is basically just an older version of this video. I have learned a lot since then, such as oil paints and other things, so I felt like it was about time to do an update video. So do let me know what you think in the comments. Will you be trying some of these techniques out, or am I just a massive sack of wind? <coughs> I know they seem so obvious and so simple, yet when I look at the kind of bigger YouTubers and the way they paint, it's so complicated and has so many different steps and stuff, and I do think they kind of forget who their audience is, and it's not full-time painters, it's mainly people who want to get stuff on the table to play games. Lots and lots of lovely, lovely games. Mm. Anyway, I'm fucking waffling on now, so big thank you to my Patreons who support the channel. I love you all. If anyone else fancies supporting me, you know, less less than less than the cost of a pint a month, you know, buy buy me buy your old uh, wee pint, you know. You can join at the link in the description and join the old Discord. I even have a YouTube membership thing now, um, I'm going to show that. But anyway, thank you all for watching, I love you all, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching everyone, um, don't forget to like and subscribe and remember to give my bell a good old ring. Alright guys, it's another speed painting episode. It's been a while since I've done one, but I've had quite a few requests over the years on how I paint up my wizards. But <clears throat> Oh Jesus Christ, what am I doing in my life? Right, it's clickbait time. What do I call this? Fucking episode of shit. Um, how to become a speed painting wizard? It's not really clickbaity. Uh, or, uh, what about follow these five steps? These five simple in caps steps. To become, become a speed painting or something. What about just the video I didn't want to make? What about just that? <laughs> I fucking hate YouTube, man. I absolutely fucking hate it. Oh.